Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance for the first ever British wheelchair basketball final between Cardiff Met University and the University of Nottingham. My name is David Waldridge, bringing you the action all afternoon long and you can keep up to date with it too by using the hashtag Bucks Big Wednesday. Now, before we get into this historic event, earlier on this afternoon I caught up with head coaches from both Cardiff Met and Nottingham. So, Tom, Cardiff with an excellent season, crowned by being here at the final. I mean, you must be so proud. Yeah, first season of Bucks wheelchair being a good competition and then sort of first season that I've been coaching these guys and, and a lot of freshers and new faces. Um, it's really great to have the sort of pinnacle event to hopefully finish the season on a high. And I mean, Cardiff Met has always been such a strong presence in the basketball community and it's amazing to see that crown for the wheelchair basketball team today. Yeah, the, the women's team have been sort of a staple of success over the, over the years. They reached the semi-finals this year. The men's team is going from strength to strength. And it's really great now that the, the wheelchair programme is integrated into that wider university setter. And, uh, and yeah, to be here in the last two, and with it all to play for in just one game, is, is really, really exciting. All to play for in one game, your words there. How are the players feeling? How is that pressure heading into the final? I don't, I don't think there is any pressure on them, to be fair. I don't think they really feel it like that. There's, like a, there's a lot of new faces, like I said. They've not really necessarily always graced the, the higher stages of basketball, so it's kind of a, a refreshing and new, exciting thing for them. Um, they know that they just have to play basketball like they've been doing over the course of, of, course of the season, and that realistically it's still 40 minutes, it's still 5v5. The only thing that changes is there's no more games after this. So I'll just be asking them to really embrace the moment. I've, I've played in losing finals before and I've played in winning finals. You have to embrace the moment because you never know when the next final is going to come along. And I think that's the key word, embrace. I mean, what a final, the first ever wheelchair basketball final. That's so special to be part of. Yeah, and, it, and it's an interesting one. We are both the away team in, in name, but also in reality. Like Nottingham managed to, managed to make it to a home final, which is great for them, and, and it'll be a really exciting occasion. We're, we're going to be backed against the walls. We're going to be underdogs here. Um, and I really just want them to, to come away from the game going, I gave it everything. I, I enjoyed playing in the first ever Bucks wheelchair final. And if they win, then and great. But they, I just want them to have something to be proud of come the rest of their careers. Well, Tom, thank you so much for your time, and good luck today. Yeah, thank you very much. So Martin, the big day is finally here, Bucks Big Wednesday, and playing at home in Nottingham as well. What an amazing achievement. Yeah, we were absolutely thrilled. We've been in the, uh, in the university tournament for about uh, five, six years. Uh, last year was supposed to be its first appearance in Bucks, so that was a bit of a write-off. But to be in the final, home ground is absolutely thrilling. And what an opposition to meet in the final as well. Cardiff, how are you going to play to your strengths to battle what they can bring today? Well, I can't say too much because the coach has stood next <laughs> to me. But uh, we've got an experienced squad, so uh, we've, uh, we've, we've put a lot out on court. We've uh, got a lot of experience to put out, so I, I think we'll give them a run for the money. And you mentioned experience there. How are the athletes feeling at the moment in the changing rooms ahead of this landmark event? Well, we've got a mix. We've got players that already play at quite a high, uh, high level in the National League, so they're used to big-ticket games. Uh, but generally, being part of uh, the, the, the new entry of wheelchair basketball into the sport has got people absolutely buzzing. They're vibrating with excitement on the bench, and it can't get to wait to get on court now. And, of course, a huge occasion as well. As you said, the athletes vibrating with excitement. I'm yeah. sure they're going to bring that energy to the court this afternoon. 100%. Yeah, they've got nothing but energy. It reminds me of when I was younger. But, uh, no, they, they, can, they can put out a lot on court and, leave, and come up back feeling fresh. Well, Martin, good luck ahead of this landmark fixture. Thank you very much.
passionately inspiring thousands of people to play the sport that she loves so much and that we are here to see today. So if able, please stand for clap for 24 seconds. Thank you. Day as we have a 24 second clap in memory of Betty Cardona, one of the idols, one of the staples, one of the pinnacles of British basketball. My name's David Walters here alongside me, wheelchair basketball international Siobhan Fitzpatrick and uh, Betty Cardona. I mean, what can you say about an icon of the game? I just think it's phenomenal to have a female icon of the game, um, someone that's changed the sport. And as you can see today, the respect that she's receiving, I'm sure that's not just from the wheelchair game and also the running game. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I can see really gone for a long time. Absolutely. It's amazing to see her remembered in that way ahead of this historic game. Thank you so much for joining us on the live stream here at Bucks Big Wednesday, brought to you by New Balance. It's a pleasure to uh, be part of this incredible historic event, Siobhan. Yeah, absolutely. I would have loved to have been part of something like this when I was completing my degree. To see wheelchair basketball featuring in the books um, is astonishing, and I hope it's something that's part of it for a very long time. Well, I mean, what two teams to have in the final as well. Cardiff Met, of course, a staple of British basketball, and the team are at home for this game, <laughs> Nottingham University. I mean, these two sides really have developed some incredible talent over the years. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it was quite difficult for these two teams to even reach the final. I know that there were some big semi-final games on the lead-up to this, um, and to see some faces that I recognise on the GB pathway featuring in this books final, um, increasing the game of wheelchair basketball for everyone involved. It's just phenomenal. So for Cardiff Met then, uh, at number four, Lauren Price. At number six, Rebecca Ganley. Number seven is Liz Ponting. Uh, number nine is Isaac Watkins. Number 10, Neve Watson. Number 11, Ben Johnson Rolf. Number 12, Martin Lane. Number 13, James Atkin. Number 14, Trevin Hughes. And number 15, Beth Jones, of course, as usual, their head coach, Tom Gundrick, who we heard from before the match here this afternoon and his assistant Rosie Williams for the University of Nottingham at zero would be Johnny Wilson at number seven Daniel May at number 25 Felix Nicklin number 11 Georgia Hill number 14 James Hazel number nine Lewis Evans number 10 Luke Hollins number 13 Max Cooper number six Sarah Ellenby number 21 Stuart Dick Number 70, William Smith, and number 22, Emily Evans, and their head coach, Martin Austin. When they don't put them in number order, Siobhan, it always gets me. I'm <laughs> glad you were in charge of that, not me. <laughs> but it should be a really is an iconic game. And you know what? In this historic final, I know we've alluded to it already, but it really could you couldn't pick two better teams, really, could you? No, absolutely. I think uh, the favourites potentially could be University of Nottingham showcasing their other performances along the league um, but Cardiff have some huge uh, players some huge potential and I think we're in for a real treat here and I mean as a player when you are on the court how beneficial is it to have a home crowd behind you does it really make that massive difference absolutely huge difference without a home crowd um, I would really struggle um, to be able to perform at that top level so yeah and this is what it's all about here at Bucks Big Wednesday, creating the future athlete stars of tomorrow. Brought to you by New Balance as well. And a massive thank you to all the sponsors across this amazing day as well. Of course, New Balance, EY, ICG, Ashaway, and our hosts, the University of Nottingham. And of course, thank you as well for joining us on this live stream. But where is the Bucks trophy going? Is it staying right here or is it going to the land of the dragon and going back home with Cardiff Met? As we are just under 25 seconds away from getting this one underway. A pinnacle moment in British wheelchair basketball. Thank you for joining us. You can stay updated online by using that hashtag Bucks Big Wednesday. So Siobhan, who are those players that we should be watching out for from both these sides? Yeah, so for University of Nottingham, uh, Daniel May, number seven. He's actually my teammate in my National League club, so I could be stay away from being the biased commentator today. <laughs> um, Luke Holland as well for that team and James Hazel. They're all on the GB pathway. They're definitely the future Paralympians of the, you know, in the near future. Uh, Cardiff Matt Archers, number 13, Jade Atkin, just returning from the Senior European Championships. Wow. Um, so, yeah, she's made her first cap for GB, um, along with a couple of the other girls that are now part of the Women's Premier League um, that started with the British World Basketball uh, this year. 
And it's, it's amazing to see how much British wheelchair basketball is growing. I remember being there at the European Championships a few years ago in Worcester. And even the growth from then to now is just phenomenal. It's absolutely huge and it's been an honour to be a part of that growth. Um, I was in the stands in 2015 at them Europeans in Worcester. Um, and now to grow and, and be established British wheelchair basketball team is phenomenal. And I just think we're going to go from strength to strength over the years from the stands to the poster girl of the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. But of course today we're all down to Big Bucks action here at Bucks Bigs Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. And we are just moments away from a historic tip-off here in the wheelchair basketball between the University of Nottingham and Cardiff Met. And it's Nottingham to start us off here to bring it up court. Who is going to get that first basket of the day? as we head forward once again. And this is what Carlos is all about, a tough defense, but Nottingham finding a way through. Doesn't quite fall because of the rebound though. Some really nice passing there around. The Cardiff recover. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see who gets the first basket to calm those nerves down um, against the crowd. It's always uh, finding that first basket. And that's it, in these first opening moments, you're just feeling out each other, aren't you really? You're just kind of testing, seeing where the head space is of either side. And that was a really nice setup there and a basket as well for Ben Johnson Rolf. Yeah, phenomenal player coming through um, the Welsh pathway actually. He's a, he's a Welsh athlete um, and he plays for my National League team too. So he's, his growth this season has been phenomenal. So to see him playing here, that is exciting. I've got the two, can you get the bonus? Doesn't quite fall for him, picked up though. And Nottingham to bring it up court once again from Wilson. Looking to find a teammate. Goes it for it alone. A little bit too much spice on that one. Yeah, and I think you'll find with this books game today that some of the less experienced players just get quite excitable and want to take all the, the open shots that they possibly can. be interesting to see how that changes throughout the game with the more experienced players coming on. And that's it. It's the atmosphere, I suppose, surrounding the game that you'll see players in these opening moments as they're testing themselves, wanting to make a name for themselves, wanting to kind of settle the nerves as best they can by trying to see their name in lights. Cardiff Met on the ball now. Looking to find a way through. Just taking his time. Got plenty left on the shot clock. It is running down though. And easily picked up by Nottingham. And that's exactly what we're talking about here in those opening stages. Just those little mistakes like that could be costly. Nottingham didn't take advantage of The referee calls that one though for a reset. Yeah, and I think that's something that Cardiff Met are going to have to be aware of. Dan May is keeping their key player now in the backcourt. And they're going to have to notice that and make some changes to get him into the game. Maybe Cardiff Met starts off once again. Would you say that with wheelchair basketball, it's, it's arguably more defensive than the, the normal basketball, let's say. You know, in, in that style, it's more kind of... Yes, OK, you're not going to get the super fast plays, but you're going to get the more tactical play. Absolutely. In the wheelchair game, we can't move laterally. Um, it was supposed to be the only game where you can move sideways. We don't have that. We have to be a lot more technically sound defensively. And like you said, offensively, um, use all the gaps in time and the shot clock that we mm. possibly can to get the best shot. Arguably smarter players in wheelchair basketball. <laughs> Very debatable. Very debatable. And of course, this is the first ever wheelchair basketball game at Bucks, but of course, part of a whole day of basketball action. We'll have more for you on the live stream throughout the day. There's so many different sports as well, more, more sports than I even knew existed. Part of Bucks Big Wednesday. Cardiff on the ball now, trying to find a way through to the outside. And I really like this by Cardiff, just taking their time. That's a great shot there by uh, Becca Ganley. Doesn't drop, um, but she's definitely yeah, someone that Nottingham need to respect and um, throughout this game. Is she a key player for you, would you say, Siobhan? Yeah, she's playing in the uh, Women's Premier League at the moment for Cardiff, um, and I just think that she's uh, a bright prospect for the future. Um, she's my classification, so I don't want to speak too highly of her. Oh, she's going to okay. be taking my spot, but no, she's, <laughs> um, she's a lovely, lovely girl to have and a great teammate. Well, we can't have any trash talking while she can't defend herself, Siobhan. <laughs> Nottingham on the ball now. May in the danger zone. Nice with the long two. Yeah. 
going to be Cardiff to start us off once again. And again, look, you, you see Cardiff's play here. They just took their time to get their players out of their side of the court. Yeah, absolutely. I think Cardiff right now just needs to be slightly more clinical mm. and is finishing that final stage off. Yeah, most of the plays coming through Martin Lane of Cardiff Met at the moment. Couldn't quite get on the end of that pass for Nottingham. Picked up, though, by Johnson Rolf. Need to bring it up court. Some nice D at the moment by Nottingham. It's part of to whip it round. That is a nice pass. Oh, and almost finished off as well by Jade Atkin. Yeah, I definitely think that's very few that she misses in that position. Um, just find her touch in this first quarter. Yeah, Jade Atkin, a big name in wheelchair basketball. And that's what you want to see in the first ever wheelchair basketball final at Bucks Big Wednesday and you want to see baskets like that very nice indeed by Johnny Wilson remember you can keep up to date online as well when your thoughts opinions your motivational messages and your reactions to baskets just like that so using the hashtag Bucks Big Wednesday powered by New Balance Nottingham looking to bring it up at the moment and Nottingham at the moment seem more reactive than proactive and it seems to be Cardiff not being clinical enough at times yeah and I definitely think Cardiff have done their research on Nottingham mm. before this game know exactly where their threats are um, and like you said Cardiff just now need to finish off those final stages great pass there by Atkin yeah and I feel that the Atkin connection between her and Martin is going to be absolutely key in this game. Goes up. Doesn't quite fall for Nottingham. Nice on the rebound, though. Just a little bit too much over the basket again for Nottingham. Johnson Rolfe. Doing a lot of work for Cardiff that's been unnoticed at the moment, actually, Johnson Rolfe. Really nice keeping it in possession. Sets up Jade Atkin. Doesn't fall. I really hope that Jade keeps taking those shots throughout the game. Because um, they will start dropping for her, hopefully. And actually, as soon as one falls, you get that momentum, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Well, Cardiff are doing all the work. They're putting themselves in a good position to take the lead forward. But it's not really dropping for them. And they make a little mistake there. Nottingham need to take full advantage of this. Doesn't quite fall that time round. Wilson's there, though, with the rebound. Doesn't land it. He's got another attempt. And Cardiff really need to pick up the defensive rebound there. That cannot happen. No, absolutely. I think Wilson there was just trying to get more stats on the sheet. Um, <laughs> but no, I think Cardiff need to uh, definitely box out and get those rebounds. Mm. Yeah, that really shouldn't have happened for Cardiff there. But Nottingham just didn't have enough firepower to punish them. And that's a timeout called here the first ever one in the first ever British wheelchair basketball Bucks big Wednesday final between Cardiff Met and Nottingham Cardiff six Nottingham four at the moment Nottingham hopefully have that home crowd to push them through a bit of a difficult opening stage for them at the moment Shimon yeah and I think both teams are having a difficult opening stage right now and I think that's sometimes it's usually one team and then the other um, I think hopefully this time out they can get a drink take a deep breath and realise that they're doing things fantastically. They just now need to finish off those final passes and take that extra breath on the shot. And I mean, the one key connection we've seen so far is uh, number 12, Martin Lane, and number 13, Jade Atkin, really linking up well. Jade not quite finishing her chances at the moment, though. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that relationship um, will be shown throughout the whole game. I think Jade, like you said earlier, as soon as she hits that one shot and gets that confidence that she is more than capable to shoot with a size 7, used to shoot with a size 6, um, hopefully will go in her favour and uh, she'll dominate the rest of the game. Absolutely. And there's a lot of set-up play from Nottingham at the moment. And they are catching Cardiff with these mistakes, but... They just aren't quite punishing at the moment. You saw Wilson at the end there. Realistically, really did need to get a basket, and he's going to be kicking himself. Absolutely, and I think part of me um, 
I don't know his background personally as a player, but I hope he's just enjoying that experience yeah, to man, learn from absolutely. that and realise that um, hopefully in the next time he has that opportunity, he won't do the same thing. And the positive was to keep getting that rebound in that position as well. That's, that's great. Didn't quite fall from that time now, though. Can Jay do something here, though? Falls for Cardiff. Number two on the board. And I think what's really important there is actually Neve Watson that created that shot for mm. Jay. That's been great. Carl in there. Um, their relationship's definitely building. So, as you can see, that replay from Jade then, who just took her time setting up. And this is what we're seeing from Cardiff, taking their time in those offensive areas. Yeah, taking that extra half a second. So, Nottingham looking to set themselves up here. Doesn't quite land Cardiff with a nice rebound, though. And can they do something here for Rebecca Ganley? Couldn't quite find the end of the pass, though. Nottingham. Managed to get almost past a tough defensive line of Cardiff, though. Doesn't quite fall, though. There's going to be a Cardiff ball. Pretty evenly matched. When we go back to Cardiff making the chances, Nottingham doing well with the defence, but then them not taking advantage of their chances so oh, it's, absolutely. <laughs> it's kind of um half one and a half dozen of the other or whatever this saying is i think nottingham are doing a great job at disrupting yeah. Cardiff out of their system um, and when they get in those opportunities they just need to knock them down jay to the outside sets up nice rebecca ganley there managing to get the two nice little link up play I mean, not going to start us off once again. So we'd have a look at that replay once again. And look at that, just sets herself up brilliantly, found that space and got the pass. Yeah, that's phenomenal from Gang to not be put off by a, a big guy in, in her face either. Hopefully she's got that tenacity through the whole game. And actually, how is that as a player? Because it is a mixed game, isn't it? Both male and female. I mean, how for you is it playing alongside males, playing alongside females? Does it affect anything at all? Or I think playing just in the women's game, I play a different role to what I would do in a mixed in a mixed right. role. Um, but playing in a in a mixed um, gender um, game for me is really really fun. Mm. It pushes you to be better as a female player. Um, mm. The men will still pass the ball at full throttle. <laughs> they won't they won't mind. So yeah, I think this is phenomenal that these junior players coming through get this opportunity along to there for Nottingham we've seen Nottingham make one earlier like that doesn't quite land that time though draws a foul and we'll go to line for two yeah Luke Holland there number 20 for uh, Nottingham um, they're usually his bread and butter shots they're usually ones that drop so hopefully he keeps taking them and they'll, they'll drop far the game well we saw one from in, in earlier that fell but just that time didn't quite fall and Wilson will go to the line First one straight in, all net from Wilson. Got another one to come. I think he'll be happy with that after missing a few oh, shots earlier on. Textbook free throw there by Wilson. You can see the referee there warning him not to come over the line with that shot. Nice rebound there by Cardiff as well. Can they build something here from deep in the defence? Nottingham, look, they're kind of swarming around Cardiff, as you say, getting in the way of their plays and forcing mistakes like that, actually. Yeah, that's a shame. That would have been a great um, connection between Lane and Gunley. I think Lane's vision on the floor um, mm. so far in the game has been fantastic. Yeah, I think Nottingham did really well to, as I say, disrupt that play there. They really did just kind of get in the way of any plays that Cardiff were bringing to the offensive area. Goes up high, doesn't quite get it. Nice pass, though. Too much of again. Had to take advantage of it, and Wilson gets it down for two for Nottingham. And it was all about that build-up play through May as well. Yeah, and unfortunately, with University of Nottingham have so many experienced players on their team, the Cardiff have to choose which one they want the shot to come from, and at the moment they're choosing Wilson, but he's finally locking them down, so they might have to change their tactics. Cardiff with a chance of their own. Couldn't quite get there, though. 
Nottingham. Three and one situation here, and they had to land it. They did. The pressure was on, and it was a really nice running forward play for Nottingham. Cardiff now. Gamley. We saw a setup a chance earlier. This could be another setup, but oh, 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 nice. Some swish movements at the back from Cardiff, but Nottingham again. Some good defense there. No look pass to May. Cardiff just looking for options here. Yeah, and with a minute left in this quarter, they need to really maintain this lead going into the second. And during these moments as a player, do you look to slow down the play in this in Cardiff situation, or do you still look to kind of, you know, really go for it? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be slowing it at this stage of, of the game. Maybe the fourth quarter you might change it up. Sure. Uh, but definitely in the first quarter, try and knock them out as much as possible. Well, there is a substitution for Cardiff at the moment, and it looks like Lee Watson heading to the bench as we head towards the halftime break and at the break Cardiff 10 Nottingham 8 so oh <laughs> we still have just under a minute left that was a shot clock it got me out it caught me out caught me out Juan <laughs> yeah basket is allowed by Jay Atkin but hopefully she'll still have confidence on making that shot even though it was a disallowed basket with a shot clock violation It's a shame, it was a nice basket to get as well. <laughs> Cardiff then with moments left here in the first quarter at Bucks Big Wednesday. Powered by New Balance, thank you so much for joining us on the live stream as well for the first ever wheelchair basketball final. As Cardiff looked to take advantage of this last attacking play. Finds Martin. Lane to... Put it up for two. Couldn't quite land it though, and Nottingham pick up the loose ball. I think in that instance, I probably wouldn't have taken that shot and pulled it back out and, and run the clock down. Yeah, it was kind of going against the plan that Cardiff have had all first quarter, taking their time. It seemed a little bit rushed. This could be nice. Doesn't quite land it though. And May, for me, is one of those players that. I've seen him grow from such a young age to now, and it's just great to see his player, this player continuously developing. Yeah, and it's quite scary because he's nowhere at his peak yet. And trust me, training against him week in, week out, it's not, I mean, it is fun, but it's not fun when you're trying to keep up with him. <laughs> <laughs> Lands his first, and he's got another one to come. Lands a second and May with that commitment and drive that he always has as well. Yeah, and they were really crucial free throws there. Mm. That ties the game going into the uh, start of the second quarter. And that's a, and that's the kind of thing you want though, don't you? In in, the, in those tight moments, players with that strong mental ability like May to drag you through to bring you back into the game once again. So Cardiff, moments left. Can they do something here? Oh, you just feel if, he, if that pass just paid off in those crucial moments, Martin could have had a nice shot. But at the first quarter, ten apiece here. Siobhan fought to that first quarter. Yeah, I'm really impressed by both sides. Um, I think the first five minutes was a little bit of just getting used to the court, mm. the atmosphere of playing in front of a crowd. Some of these, some of these people here today, they may not be used to that. And hopefully now in the second quarter. Um, we'll start to see uh, a lot more baskets being dropped, a lot more defensive uh, fight coming through from both teams. And at the moment, I do not know who's going to win it, which is what you want from a basketball game, right? Absolutely. And you know what? You touched upon it there, and that's what Bucks is all about, creating those athletes of tomorrow. Athletes that, as you say, only usually training in a gym and not used to a big crowd like this. And it's nice to see them paired with athletes who may have slightly more experience and allowing more to kind of have a pathway through. 
I think it's really important to note as well that not everyone that's playing in this books final has a disability. There's some able-bodied athletes here that just want to play wheelchair basketball as part of their university society. Mm. Um, and I think that's a phenomenal thing that we are able to do as a British wheelchair basketball organisation, just to show that um, you, they just want to play the sport. It might not necessarily mean that they want to represent the country at the end of the day. They just want to have fun and be part of this fantastic experience. And of course, everybody seems to be wanting to be a part of wheelchair basketball at the moment. Of course, the Premier League new for this year as well. And the first ever Big Bucks final. Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, bringing you here on the live stream the first ever wheelchair basketball final. Myself, David Waters, alongside GB International, Siobhan Fitzpatrick. You'll see her face plastered all over Birmingham ahead of those Commonwealth Games as well. Why do you stop mentioning that? <laughs> we should encourage selfies with the, with the pictures. In the <laughs> Send them to us. Use our hashtag. <laughs> but it's Big Wednesday. <laughs> so as we head into the second quarter then, what, what are we looking for? What are these athletes going to be thinking? I? I definitely think they just need to be slightly more clinical. I don't think either side is doing anything majorly wrong. There's nothing that the coaches need to dramatically change from either of the lineups. Um, I think it's just finishing those final stages both defensively and offensively, playing those whole 20, 24 seconds out um, and don't have to rush anything. Yeah, I think it was a rather kind of kind of calm first quarter, I think it's safe to say. There wasn't the usual vibrancy that you sometimes get from wheelchair basketball. So definitely more tactical than anything else in that first quarter. But I do feel near the end of that, we were starting to see some of these players starting to show their, why they're in these sides. And hopefully that can continue now to our second quarter here. Yeah, I am quite surprised to see a lack of showboating so far by some of the more experienced <laughs> players to use this platform to do that. Um, but Ben here now, um, hopefully on the line for one. But the referee is having a discussion about uh, whether it was a foul or not. So we'll see what the referee's call. If it is a foul, the basket will be good, and he'll go to the line for one. If no basket, he'll go to the line for two. It looks like he's going to the line for two. I'm not quite sure um, why that basket was disallowed yeah. from, my, from my view, but they clearly see a different angle. So to the line, two. Looks like an unsportsmanlike foul for some reason. I think we might miss something there. From the referee's signal, it looked like the chairs are connected and lifting him off the ground. Ah, I don't okay. think it was an intentional unsportsmanlike, but that is an unsportsmanlike yeah. foul within the game, um, unfortunately. Which now means from that that Cardiff get an extra possession. So hopefully they can capitalise off this. Really could be crucial for Cardiff here. It's one of those moments in the game that doesn't seem like a big mo no moment now, but as the game goes on, you'll look back at this kind of moment of those extra possessions, those extra fouls, those extra chances taken. Yeah, absolutely. Cardiff take it up. Couldn't quite land it there. Wilson to bring it up court for Nottingham. Wilson, total of six rebounds so far in this game. Nice pass there, right into the centre. That was a great inside there. Pass mm. to uh, Tom Wilson to Hazel. Maybe Nottingham to bring it in. From the inline. Lines it up and ricochets into the basket there. Lovely stuff from Danny May. Six points so far in this game for him. Yeah, I definitely think that con connection between Dan May and Luke Holland in 7 and 20. Um, you don't want them two together. If I was Cardiff, you'd want to be separating them and pushing them off the block. Cross court from Cardiff. Nice find on that pass and a nice basket to finish as well. Rebecca Ganley connecting once again with Jade Atkin. Absolutely love how she's just ready to catch and shoot oh, on, that, on that weak side. No hesitation either. Nice find to Wilson in the middle. That was a great find there from Danny May. So Jade Atkin once again to bring it up court. Oh. Oh. 
foul called. I think Cardiff may have got away with that one. Yeah, I thought he was going for the backcourt violation. Which first. I was about to say, that's yeah. really unfortunate. But no, it looks like um, number seven for Cardiff has, has got away with that yeah. mistake. So it'll be Cardiff in the sideline to bring the ball in. Atkin, Gamley. Looks to find a way through. Nice, lands. Good stuff for Johnson Rolfe. And for me, at the moment, a key player in this game, he's doing a lot of the work that's going unnoticed. Yeah, and sometimes they're the most important players, you know, you know from the world of basketball, sometimes the things that aren't on the stats are often the most important plays. Um, yeah, he's doing a lot of kind of that, I would say, point guard positioning, but not so much a point guard role, role. in terms of shooting. Yeah, I think he's taken some of the pressure off Atkin and Gamley mm. to be able to get those open it's shots. May. One of those players that's always committed to the ball, always committed to the cause. Goes up. Oh, a little bit too much to simmer. That's unlucky there by Hazel. Great passing from uh, Dan May. Again, two players that are used to playing with each other on the GB pathway. And how important is that to have those kind of link ups with players? I mean, to know, like, oh, they like to receive the ball this certain way. Yeah, it's, it's crucial, I think, to you to become experienced in this game, to build those relationships. Mm. It's not an easy thing to do, and um, for me, it makes it so much easier to know where person A is going to be at yeah. what specific point. You don't necessarily need to talk. You can just develop that eye contact to know exactly where they're going to be. Give them the look. <laughs> I suppose that helps in opposite way as well if you're playing against someone that you usually play with. It looks like a substitution for Nottingham as well with Max Cooper heading to the bench. Nice, straight off the backboard. Straight in by Gamley with the first. Got a second to come. She's had a storm of a game so far. Oh, a fantastic game so far. Unfortunate there with the second. Cardiff from the in line now. And look at that, Martin Lane causing a barricade there, allowing for the shot to happen, and Cardiff get the two points. That was a great I'll tell you what, Gallon needs to play in front of a crowd more often. <laughs> she's having an absolutely <laughs> fantastic game. And I'm not that experienced with watching her in the National League, but she's definitely developing in the women's game, and I'm excited about her future. Well, that was a great attempt by May. Couldn't quite land it, though. Cardiff pick up the rebounds. Right over to Gamley once again. The ball seems just drawn to her all the time. <laughs> Rolf to the outside. Lines it up. Just about nice from Cardiff. That's an absolutely fantastic finish there by Liz. Um, I think her, I don't, not to, I've ever seen her play wheelchair basketball before, so I don't know if this is her first ever season playing. And to make that finish at this crucial stage of the quarter, phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely, and we're trying to get a little re replay of that as you see. The ball lands to it. She doesn't have a lot of time to think about it. I think sometimes that might be better. I think sometimes, even from my experience, when you think too much, you can overthink it and, and panic. And I uh, suppose if you overthink it, you f just forget that kind of training instinct that you've learned in the gym, right? Yeah, absolutely. So once again, a massive thank you to all of our sponsors for Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, including EY, ICG, Ashaway, our host the University of Nottingham. Nottingham playing at home in the first ever wheelchair basketball final. As we said earlier, everyone wants to be a part of wheelchair basketball at the moment. It's growing and it's amazing to see. It's amazing to be part of Bucks Big Wednesday. So, scores at the moment there, Nottingham 14, Cardiff 21. It doesn't seem that there should be that big a gap between these two sides, though. It still seems pretty even. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams are absolutely even. I think uh, Becca Ganley is just being crucial with finishing those shots. 
Um, and hopefully uh, University of Nottingham will change their tactic to just keep her out of their position that she's performing in so well. And overall Nottingham are having a really good defensive display at the moment and are starting to take those chances that maybe necessarily they weren't in the first quarter but as you say, Ganley is just everything she touches turns to basket at the moment. Don't want to jinx it. May to bring it up court then. May for me created one of my favourite ever memories of basketball. Look, I mean, come on. Come on now. Of course when he was going to do that just as you said he that. Was, of course he was. His second favourite moment. No, when I saw him play in the uh, school games a few years ago, I think 2015, and his commitment to the ball was just incredible. Every, he battled for every single ball. I've never seen a play like it. I think his growth in this, in this game um, has been huge. Mm. Some players take a little bit longer and his, his growth is now to be part of the books and take more of a leadership role within this team. Hopefully will grow his uh, national team experience even more. And he was alluding to the earlier one, it's what Bucks is all about, creating those athletes of the future. Wow, another basket for Nottingham, here they come. Four point gap now, but yes, creating those athletes of the future, but also those athletes that are here just to have a bit of fun. Oh, wow. And again, look, the commitment. Again, Cardiff still battling forward despite the break in play there. Unaffected. This is what wheelchair basketball is all about, that commitment to the cause takes it up and didn't quite land it and I know you were saying earlier you don't want to take too much time thinking about it but I think they could have done longer. with half a second more there that's a good line here up in Nottingham have come out to play and that was a great uh, slight fade away there by Luke Collins got away from the defender and gave himself that extra half a second to get that shot away let's see if we can uh, get Jay Dakin back into the game Cardiff now and this is what worked for them in the first quarter just taking their time to swat it away by Wilson but again that relationship between Acton and Lane still prevalent just finishing that final stage off now and I think Nottingham have kind of woke up to that connection seeing that she was looking for Lane and just swatted the ball away through Wilson couldn't quite get on the end of the pass there though that time yeah I think both sides there need to uh reduce some of their turnovers and, and really start to be a little bit more clinical with their passes maybe put a name on it absolutely and Cardiff to bring the ball up once again to Lane Gunning Lane linking up once again looks to get on the end of that pass no good though for Atkin Atkin currently with four assists so far in this game but it doesn't matter when Nottingham are behind enemy lines through Wilson. Couldn't quite land it. Great Johnson pass there by Ben. Yeah, absolutely. Almost found the pass. Lane Zed. That was a nice choice. She could have shot, but she saw the spare player to the side of her, and that was expert play, knowing that they would be open. She was causing the block already. And two, the basket was at his win. Draws a foul, we'll get to the line for one. Like you said earlier, I think that's a crucial free throw right there. They're maintaining Absolutely. the lead. Um, you, d you just thought Nottingham was starting to grow into the game slightly and it kind of just kind of put a plug on that. Yeah, that and play. wheelchair basketball is definitely a game of runs and momentum. And if a team can kill that momentum, that's, that's what we want. But with a shot like that from Danny May, you just need one of those to fall again and momentum can soon swing back to you in your favour. And he'll go to the line for two from the foul. And this is a replay of that, what drew the foul for May. First one didn't quite land, he's got another one to come. Second one's good for Nottingham. Five point game here. Yeah, and that's really smart by me there to adjust his shot. Went slightly long with the first, took some power off and drained the second. 
Bucks big Wednesday across so many sports here today at the University of Nottingham including this one the first ever wheelchair basketball final thank you so much for joining us as Cardiff look to take it up court couldn't quite land it though didn't seem to get the ball high enough under pressure there looks like they draw the foul yeah well, from, from my um, eye that's an interesting call there from referee I would have called it personally on Ganley but um, my angle may be different there from referees Cardiff now from the inline. She straightened it up but didn't quite land it that time. Atkin. The referee calling for the offensive foul there, blocking foul, and I think that was a fair call to make. Absolutely. Um, and I hope that uh, Nottingham don't get frustrated with this. on the flip side Cardiff uses to their advantage and this is it this goes back to what we were saying those moments in the game that may not necessarily be in the final quarter in the closing moments but are still crucial even at these early stages Lane looks to set up Ganley Atkin he's got time yeah, too much power Wilson picks up the rebound though, nicely done. Nottingham can reset once again and bring it up court. Just under three minutes here in a second quarter. Wilson sets up. Drives straight through, a massive gap to go through there. Yeah, and that's a fantastic finish there. Um, not to be too critical for my wheelchair basketball brain, but I think Ganley just stayed out a little bit too long at the top, um, so there was no help or cover there. Yeah, there was a bit of a spare person at the back there, Cardiff. Three-point game. Looks to bring it up court. Going all the way. Couldn't quite find that pass. And Nottingham. Again, bring it forward. Momentum swinging their way once again. And take advantage of the play there. And the mistake from Cardiff on the pass. And that is a timeout called at a crucial moment. You kind of feel that that was right to call the timeout there. Yeah, I think that's a really smart timeout call there by Cardiff. And for those watching on the stream, the crowd here now is absolutely going wild. And I think that will definitely help build the Nottingham, Nottingham's uh, momentum going forward. For me, it's the little things that Cardiff just need to get right and just finish those final little passes off. And they're right there. This is it. I mean, both sides at the moment, we've seen, we've seen what they can do. I think that's safe to say. But also at the moment, and this is why it's so close, this game, realistically it's quite even still because they're both making mistakes but also they're both playing really well at times yeah I'm really excited just to actually see such an even game um, mm. within the University Championships and hopefully we can continue that into the second half as well I'm sure as the, the coaches for both teams don't want it to be so close uh, but for definitely for my spectator viewing for us, I'm we really <laughs> enjoying it <laughs> and for everyone watching on the live stream as well for Bucks Big Wednesday powered by New Balance we want it as well make it as close as possible make it as memorable as possible the first ever historic British wheelchair basketball final here at Bucks Big Wednesday and you can hear the crowd they're starting to warm up Siobhan yeah, absolutely, and I've just made uh, eye contact with Dan May's dad, who I know very well, who is getting the crowd absolutely raucous. So for um, those Nottingham home crowd, might pay off when it comes to in the fourth quarter. The May family always loud and proud at these games. And every voice, Nottingham need to use their advantage. Playing at home here for Bucks Big Wednesday. Cardiff, they don't seem too troubled by that at the moment, the home crowd. They seem to be pushing Nottingham all the way one point game at the moment can Nottingham do something here though lines it up oh, wow nice that's a fantastic finish there by Luke Collins being defended very heavily by Gatling yeah Luke just kind of grabbed the ball by the scruff of the neck and just went for it there as we continue here Cardiff Met and Nottingham. Lines it up. This could be a nice two. Doesn't quite land it though. 
And for me, Johnson Rolf really has been key for Cardiff. For me, he is the one that's kind of linking it all together. May for Nottingham. As calm as you like, as cool as a cucumber, but doesn't quite land it. Yeah, and I think Cardiff just needs to slightly improve on their communication in defence. Um, and know that to trust each other. And so you can see those tactics pay off just like that from Cardiff in the offensive areas. But as you say, defensively, still looks a little bit panicky at times. Nice little layoff to Nottingham. Punish and Nottingham lead for the first time in this game. Cardiff are rattled at the moment. And again, taking advantage of that mistake. Cardiff at the back. Yeah, and James Hazel there with the finish. Uh, two basket attempts to go. Really smart with that scoop finish. Hope he can continue that part of the game. And Wilson blocking the pass. With six seconds left in this quarter. Nottingham have time to pull up one last basket through May. It's good! And wow, what a few final moments of that first half in the second quarter. Cardiff in at the break, 28, have given away that lead. lead. Nottingham, 31. Yeah, I think Nottingham have been really good finishing off, but like you said, I think it's been more Cardiff's mistakes that have allowed Nottingham's momentum to shift. Um, me, if I was a player now for Cardiff, would use that as excitement to come out and really show that they are capable and what they can achieve. But, I mean, it's one of those, you kind of blinked and you missed it. We got to, what, the, the eighth minute of the second quarter? And then suddenly Nottingham decided to put a, a, a complete run-up together. Six points, I think, in one go. Yeah, 14-point tournament in that corner. Amazing. So your top point score at the moment from Nottingham, Holland. And, I mean, Holland, everything he touched turned to basket in that second quarter. Really came alive, but Ganley, she was dominant in the first quarter. So it really is a tussle between these two. Yeah, and I still can't call it. A three-point game in this quarter is uh, it going into the half. It's nothing and you can see some some of the replays now some of this linking play that we've seen from Cardiff so far and that really did work during the first quarter but as the game grew as the game progressed those linking plays kind of got red by Nottingham yeah absolutely I think Nottingham did a fantastic job in disrupting those plays I think Cardiff now needs to be maybe slightly less predictable yeah like they knew that Atkin was going to pass the lane they knew that Lane was going to pass to Gunley can they now involve a third, fourth player into that mix? This is, I think Cardiff need to create some more options. Earlier on, we saw Nottingham putting a lot of their play through Wilson. Wasn't quite working with the rebound play. And now they're kind of charging through Holland and having May as the final pass off in a way. And that's starting to work for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, again, they might not be able to stick with that for the whole second half. I think it's really important in the wheelchair game and the game of basketball, you have to be adapted. These, these coaches for both these teams are smart. They're calling smart timeouts. They're making smarter substitutions. Um, and I think that you can't necessarily have one game plan for the whole game to, for either team to come out with the win. And this is what you saw. We saw it in the package just there. We saw a lot of uh, Nottingham charging the ball forward in some cases. And often it came from a Cardiff mistake. But a lot of those drives is what we seen from Nottingham. Whereas Cardiff is taking their time passing around the D. Yeah, and I think both tactics are either are working for both sets of teams. Um, I think Cardiff at times have been a slightly too rushed um, in their finishing times. They're taking the time to get the shot and then just taking a fraction longer and I think them shots will drop. I think Atkin needs to keep shooting um, and for Nottingham, just keep their disruptive defence. I think they're winning this game through disrupting Cardiff out of their system. And for me, this is a man that's done really well for Cardiff so far. Ben Johnson Rolf doing a lot of that, what I call dirty work, behind the scenes that you don't see. Yes, OK, he isn't going to appear on the live score stats, but he's the one that's assisting the assister. Yeah, absolutely. And they're all with the players that often go and notice on the stats and they're not the ones that necessarily get the MVPs in the limelight. But for me, they're quite possibly the most important players to have in your team because it makes those those scorers and those creators' jobs so much easier. So, Fusion One, then, what do we need to see from the second half from both these sides? I don't think there needs to be any dramatic changes. I think we've seen here that the game's been phenomenal both ends I think it's just both sides being clinical now with with their passes and with their finishes and just taking that extra breath hopefully now the first half students some of the nerves have disappeared they've got used to the noise they've got used to the crowd and the baskets um, and the referee calls 
just going in the second half and just really enjoy it and have fun. Well, this is the thing as well. If we have a look at the stats, in terms of field goals, Nottingham 37%, 14 from 37, whereas Cardiff have 12 from 26, 46%. And I think that kind of says it all, that a lot of Nottingham's chances has come from those free flows. Free flows? Free throws. And it's been those mistakes from Cardiff at the back, whereas offensively, Cardiff are doing pretty, getting the job done, really. Absolutely, for Cardiff, for me, I'd better at getting those rebounds. I think Nottingham mm. have had some second chances. Um, and like you said, being clinical there with their chair position to not foul and give away those free throws. So here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, it's all about those athletes of the future. It's all about those having fun, those the very best, the pinnacle in university sport. Siobhan Fitzpatrick joining me alongside in the commentary booth. And Siobhan, I mean, it's a pleasure to have you here. A GB athlete with us, of course, Commonwealth Games coming up. I mean, you've, you've played in many a tournament like this. I mean, talk us through how your career is going so far with what's to come and what's gone so far. Yeah, first of all, I'd say I would have absolutely loved to be part of this today. Maybe one day in the future, if I potentially study a Masters, I might see my name feature within one of these teams. But I just think this is a phenomenal experience for all those players to, to get used to competing in an event like this. Um, and it's something that would have helped me in my early stages of my career. Um, but yeah, my career at the moment is, is going really, really well. Um, came back from Tokyo into the European Championships. Unfortunately, I was injured. Um, so my reserve had to take my space in the European Championships. But all well now and going forwards in the Women's Premier League and driving forwards to the World Championships in November. So yeah, lots going on. And of course, this is the first ever wheelchair basketball final at Bucks. But also as well, you mentioned it there, the Premier League. I mean, that's new for 2022-2021. But how's that grown already in such a short space of time and to be part of that? Yeah, if you do, if you read behind this conversation two, three years ago, I never thought it would have been possible. I think the growth of wheelchair basketball within this country has been astonishing. And the success of the women's team is really helping with that really helping grow the women's game and I think it's so important that the yes for me to have a platform to play my role against some elite women but also the women of the future to have that outlet to not have to play in a national league club where they don't play their roles or they might not get the court time that they deserve um, and I think at the moment we have four really really strong teams and I'm hoping within the next few years that can grow and continue to attract international players and really be something that um, we paved the way for in women's sport. And I think you've touched upon it there. It's it's not just about being a flash in the pan, having one good squad and then not doing anything with it. It's about creating that pathway for the future and allowing us to have continued success. Yeah, absolutely. All four teams feature um, a variety of the GB national team as well as the GB junior team and players that have not even played before. So we are here once again at Bucks Big Wednesday. Myself, David Waldridge, joined alongside GB International, Shimon Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us for this historic event. <laughs> and of course, uh, still loads for you as well, personally, coming up in the summer at the Commonwealth Games, a three on three game. We were talking about the Premier League game just there. I mean, to see the game develop again into a new format, how is that for you going into that? Yeah, really excited. I don't really know what to expect. I'm just going out there to enjoy it and showcase wheelchair basketball on another platform to be integrated within able-bodied sport for the first time ever in a multi-sport event. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, certainly going to be an iconic, historic event. But we got our own iconic and historic event right here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. A big thank you to all of the sponsors today as well, including EY, ICG, Ashaway, and the host University of Nottingham, who are also playing in this final as well. Got a home field advantage, some would say. And, I mean, we've had our first half already. What are those key moments from both these sides so far, Shimon? Yeah, I think there's been lots of key moments to, to whittle down into um, a couple of minutes. But I think, like you said earlier, Ben from the Cardiff team is, is really creating for the likes of Ganley and Atkin to get those shots off. Dan May, Luke Holland really establishing their presence within that team. But also some faces and names that wheelchair basketball world may not have even seen before, really showcasing that they can be part of this sport. Wilson for Nottingham really taking every advantage. Liz pointing to Cardiff scoring that huge basket going up in the second quarter. Um, yeah, it's just a phenomenal experience for everyone involved, really. 
And of course, you can join the conversation as well. Use the hashtag BucksBigWednesday. Brought to you by our headline partners, New Balance. New Balance is selling bespoke event merchandise, including a winner's range. So make sure you visit the Bucks shop on the Bucks website to order online and get yourself some new brilliant merch to celebrate reaching the finals and being part of this historic event in the wheelchair. Country behind Cardiff Met <laughs> in this final. Yeah, absolutely. What they're doing for wheelchair basketball in that um, environment within that university is astounding. And it's quite interesting to see Dan May feature on the University of Nottingham team. He's came through that Welsh pathway. So uh, he'll be playing against some of his players that he plays against within that pathway. And as a player, Siobhan, with these players where, as you say, they may be come across each other during those pathways, how beneficial or detrimental is that when you're playing in a final like this when they're on your team it's beneficial um, it's beneficial when they're when you're against them because you know what they're going to do but I think for me even playing in this women's Premier League they're not my teammates um, when I'm playing against them and off court we're all friends that get on well but yeah you're there to do a job and you're there to get that win so lots of hugs after this game man whoever wins and whoever gets that silver medal <laughs> As we get underway once more, third quarter action between the University of Nottingham and Cardiff Met. Cardiff 28, Nottingham 31 with a really late charge in that second quarter. I think it was a 14-point turnaround by Nottingham. Really impressive stuff. As Cardiff get us underway once more. Nicely picked out again by Wilson. And again, look, this is what was happening in that final moment of the second quarter. Nottingham couldn't take advantage, though. I think Cardiff have been really lucky there with um, Hazel missing that Absolutely. layup. Absolutely. Looking to drive it forward though. Ganley, who's had an incredible game for Cardiff. On the outside. Tough D by Nottingham. Finds a way through, makes some space. And whoa! All basket! Phenomenal. I thought there there might be some shot clock violations. She was out there by herself, but. Gally doesn't need her teammates looking like that right now. Yeah, she had the blockade of the two Nottingham players, but managed to find a way around and create space for herself. Incredible. And again, that's what we're talking about in this game. Cardiff with that offensive play, really impressive. And here comes through once again. Doesn't quite land, though. Yeah, I think we'd have just taken his time for half snaps a second longer yeah, uh, but again it. Lane doing a lot of creating here for Cardiff <laughs> Rafa doesn't know what he calls a foul there Nottingham to the side did well to bring it back in that first half second quarter can they continue that momentum though Finds a way over the top, and it's that man once again. Holland on 14 points in this game. Yeah, I see Nottingham now trying to do that disruptive press like defence to get Cardiff out of their system. And so far it's working, it's just Gunley seems to be finishing their shots. And Lane finds a nice pass as well, and great connection there with Rolf. And is that a new partnership, a new tactical play to go forward from Cardiff? A new option. We were mentioning it at halftime. That's what Cardiff need, options. They need to change it around, as Nottingham have. And finding success with it there. Max Cooper.
Gamli. She's got Ponting to the right. Finds the pass to Lane. Cardiff taking their time once again. This, see, this is what we want to see. That was what Cardiff were doing in the first quarter, bringing that back again. Yeah, and I definitely think they just need to realise that the scoreline is so close. They don't need to panic. They need to continue to doing their everything right. And then the score kind of takes care of itself that way. Take your time. Don't make those mistakes. And like you, this could be crucial here for Cardiff, stopping Nottingham's momentum. Yeah, get those turnovers in. And they all add up. If you can make one or two, even three of those counted baskets, it all works. And once again, see, couldn't quite take advantage of that steal there. Lane finds a pass. Beautiful play. Liquid basketball there by those two. It's going to be really beautiful. That relationship there in the last three, four offenses has been oh, fantastic. It was almost like a Picasso painting there for a second, Javon. Beautiful pass there between those two. Sideline ball for Nottingham then. And you saw Rolf and Martin link up in that first half, but more so that it'll be Rolf setting up the assister in lane. It doesn't quite land. Cardiff with the rebound though, nicely done on the defensive line there. Under pressure from Nottingham though, and Nottingham all the way back. They've got Ponting. If she can get the pass off to Ganley, could be a nice chance for Cardiff here. Leaving Gamley on her own. Yeah, I'm not quite sure yeah. um, what Nottingham's tactic is here. She's the only one, really. I can't put Rolf's well, hitting a couple, but she's really the only one causing I mean, any damage. I if I was their yeah. coach, I'd be putting two people on her and allowing the likes of Ponty. I don't understand why they just let her get away like that, you know? I could understand it if, you know, she wasn't in the shooting mood, but as we've seen, she's doing really well in this half so yeah, far. Nine points already. Nottingham need to adjust to that if they want to um, take this lead in the game. Otherwise, it's like you said earlier. It's going to be to the wire. I think you could tell by the shock of us commentating that we just didn't say anything for a minute. Like, why has she been left on her own? <laughs> Can't have taken full advantage there. Oh, that kind of went in, surely. He gets half a point for that now. Yeah, no, I wish that's the way it would. My career would maybe be a lot easier if we were given half points for, things, for shots like that. Um, but no, it's still a fantastic offensive play there by Cardiff. Yeah. It shouldn't be disheartened by a, a miss shot. It really wasn't a miss. It wasn't yeah, way off. Kind of just got a place to their strengths here, which is that offensive play. I think Jade's big presence as well, even though she might not be on it offensively in this game, they're that worried about letting them into the key. It's allowing the galley load open shots. But Jade's allowing that and saying, okay, you're not going to let me in, but then I'll just create a barrier and my teammate can shoot instead because she's in a shooting mood. May, lovely find to Wilson, who just kind of got straight into that pass, but couldn't quite get the basket at the end of it. They're still letting Gangley win from coast to coast here. Almost set up as well. Just over five minutes on the clock then. One point game here. <laughs> what a game for the first ever wheelchair basketball final at Bucks Big Weekend. Powered by New Balance. That's a great eight second viol court violation there um, by Joe Dutton's defence on Luke Holland. Yeah, Cardiff just slightly dialing up that defensive play. That's one thing we asked of them during that halftime break, and they're kind of delivering here in the third. It's almost like they've got an earpiece listening to our commentary. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> got a substitution here for Cardiff with Neve Watson back on and pointing off. Um, I don't think it's going to change momentum in any way. We saw Watson in the first quarter really create for her players around her. Yeah, it's just about keeping that momentum going, keeping those fresh athletes out there. And I think Nottingham have made too many changes so far. I'm sure they'll be thinking about it soon. Goes up for the basket. Couldn't quite land. That was slightly rushed. That was slightly rushed. That's part of it to bring it forward through lane. Just on the half court line there. Managed to get away. And Nottingham applied the pressure and then released it again. And that was a fantastic cross there by Ganley. I just wish that Lane had just had maybe a slightly better vision to make that pass I slightly earlier. I think he earlier. saw Ganley at the very last second there, in all fairness, but I see exactly what you're saying. He had loads of space and just didn't take advantage of it. And Nottingham take full advantage of it there. It's still a one-point game. 
really evenly matched these two sides. Can't describe it, it's amazing. Lane. Yeah, like I said earlier, both teams are making similar mistakes, both mm. teams are making the same shots. Gunley. Oh, just simmers over the top, Johnson Rolf. Hollins. 12 points so far for him. Le sets up May. Back to Holland once more. Doesn't land Cardiff. Great on the defensive rebound. Looks to power through. And I Johnson wish the referee Rolf. hadn't called that foul there. Just let the advantage go. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I, I know, it, I know it, it was a foul, but... You, he, for me, he had enough distance away from the Nottingham defence there. He disrupt his yeah. ability to get to the basket. For me, it, it was almost... You, you, you almost called it too late for me that time, you know. Well, that's also to a player for um, Nottingham with four fouls, so a substitution there. Yeah, a bit of foul trouble for Nottingham as we have the substitution there with William Smith making his way out to the court, replacing number 13, Max Cooper. Lane. Nice pass to him. Johnson and Rolf on the outside. And that was a pushing foul. And against Cardiff for the offensive foul. Yeah, I'm not just sure if it's our angle here um, that we can't necessarily I see. But from my eye, I would have let that go. And yeah. The biggest lesson I've learned never disagree with referee <laughs> we weren't saying we were disagreeing Ron, before you get us in trouble <laughs> Lane was looking to bring up court Wilson had I think, the block I think sometimes it's valid from a referee yeah, here we've only got two referees obviously in yeah. the international game we have three so you can see from both angles Yeah, um, it does make it hard when you've got so many players so many aspects of the game to look at and I mean for you as a player how difficult is it to referee wheelchair basketball? Because there's a lot of things to consider here. I definitely wouldn't want to be in that position. Um, I think it's, it's one of the hardest things. You've got to look at the chair, you've got to look at their hands, you've got to look at the page, you've got to look at all sides of the key. Uh, back court, front court, everything like that. You've got to deal with the coaches and everything. That, for me... But for me, it's one of those, because it's more of a tactical game, because you see those blockages, you know, and you see those kind of stops of passes that... Is it a foul? Is it just an all block? Is it, it's, it's harder to call that side of it, you know? Yeah, and absolutely. A lot of the referees that we have come from the winning game as well, so they, they're they used to calling slightly different things, mm. um, which makes it interesting. And it's where both sides, both the officials and the players, then get to learn that and build that relationship. And you can see it there on the replay, the blockage that we're talking about there. It's some really nice stuff from uh, James Hazel of Nottingham against Martin Lane. Great rebound there by Ganley to stay on the court. Mm. Oh, that was a lucky air on the pass. Cardiff couldn't quite recover there. It was going to be a Nottingham ball from the sideline. Yeah. One point game and it's still between these two. Yeah, and you can see that Atkin there getting a little bit frustrated with their teammates uh, about offering an outlet. I think that's just something that needs to be built through communication for the, for the Cardiff team. Wilson finds May. Some quick pass in there. By Nottingham couldn't quite pay off though. It's gone out off a Cardiff player. Need Watson in particular. Timeout call there for the Cardiff side. Yeah, I think it was one of those where Cardiff were just starting to make a few little silly sloppy mistakes. So I think uh, we're just calling that in for the timeout there. Yeah, and I definitely think with the way that they finished the second end of the second quarter, they don't want to repeat of that going into the yeah. end of the third. So it's a great idea to just kill any... Stop the rock before it happens. Absolutely. Coach Gun Drip there. Absolutely. Really good call. Really good call on the timeout. But, I mean, I mean, we look over at the other camp at the moment. Coach Austin, Nottingham, really doing well to grow back in this one. I mean, you saw that first half. Yes, OK, there was particularly even, but Cardiff really had that advantage with the offensive play. But actually... This quarter, I'd say, has been the closest between the two. They're both really calling each other out. Yeah, absolutely. And I still don't know who's going to win which in this stage of the game. You can usually pip it and who might get there. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, really excited to see how they end this quarter um, leading into the fourth. And you can join us as well by using that hashtag 
Bucks big Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us on the wheelchair basketball live stream. The first ever wheelchair basketball final here at the University of Nottingham playing at home against Cardiff Mets, one of the staples of British basketball against an inst a sporting institution like the University of Nottingham. Both these sides have created so many amazing players, so many amazing pathways over the years as well. A big thanks to New Balance as well, our partner, to bring you Bucks Big Wednesday as well. As we get ready, underway once again. Danny Nathan side. To the outside, couldn't make anything happen there. The referee calls for the pushing foul against Cardiff. And once again, a massive thank you to our sponsors, all of them, not just New Balance, EY, ICG, Ashaway, and our host, the University of Nottingham. Stay updated online by using the hashtag Bucks Big Wednesday. Again, in the way, Nottingham in a real danger zone. Nice there from Cardiff and Rebecca Ganley. Couldn't quite take advantage of the steal, but I think that was important in itself just to slow down the play. Absolutely, allow Cardiff to reset, take momentum, uh, Nottingham out of their system. Looks to set up once more. Nice pass straight into the middle. Couldn't quite happen though for Nottingham. And Cardiff once again. Jade Atkin finds Gamley. I think that might be the first basket she's missed today. <laughs> I think both these sides just kind of settling in these final state closing stages of the third quarter. Things just getting a little bit tense between the two yeah and I'm always astounded by Dan Mate's ridiculously long arms how he just reached to the ground there to pick Crazy. up the ball he got a foul but I think if he hadn't got a foul he'd have got grab that and again um, one of the Cardiff players now on four fouls and infaltable hopefully this won't change the momentum too much ending this third quarter and substitution for Cardiff as well looks like uh, Ponting is back on court once again replacing Martin Lane who has had a good game so far. Yeah, and I think if I was laying in that position, knowing that he might be potentially foul trouble, would you just let the ball go and not necessarily then fight for it when he's, he's got another quarter to go? But like you said, he's had a phenomenal game and, and so is Ponting, so she hopefully will come on and, and complete his role as well. Yeah, Ponting's done really well as that kind of rotating bench player in this game so far. Again, one of those players that so far, yes, okay, she isn't, her name isn't up in lights on the scoreboard, but actually fulfilling that role of being the rotating player is just as valuable and she is doing a fantastic job of that in this game yeah absolutely so Cardiff to bring up the ball once again through Johnson Rolfe another one of those players who's having a good game so far Danny May though just about gets the steal though Wilson goes up doesn't land though that time for Holland Wilson with the rebound and again had to get it the third time round and they did makes it a three point game here in Nottingham yeah. and whilst we've seen substitutions from Cardiff we haven't seen many so far from Nottingham there's going to be a lot of tired athletes out there yeah it's absolutely and I wonder if that might then impact them going late into the fourth potentially let's hopefully Cardiff can create an offence from this unfortunately a turnover brings it forward now Nottingham three on one situation have to take advantage doesn't get a basket but draws a foul Wilson will go to the line for two and I mean in that position I think I would have done the same thing as what Gamley did in all fairness yeah absolutely it's just unfortunate that she couldn't get chair position and necessarily stop her chair before putting her hand up but she's only on two fouls nothing to worry about just yet and you don't really have to worry about team fouls when it's this deep into one of the quarters either so it was a good call Wilson for the second Got the first, couldn't quite get the second, but this could be crucial for Nottingham. It's good! 
Whoa! <laughs> it's almost like I'm repeating the second quarter. They just seem to know better than Kylie how to finish those quarters They just off. find a way. They just find a way every time they're up in the Cardiff D. Uh, if I was Nottingham now, I would use the whole of the 10 seconds and not throw anything silly away. Take it. Take your time. Take your time now. See, that time didn't land. I would have passed it to May on the outside and allow him to hold it in that corner, go from three. But I was wrong. <laughs> Nottingham with another two at the break. Wow. What a third quarter. And again, it's, it's almost, as you say, a carbon copy of the second in the final minute or so. Yeah, Nottingham just went on the roll. Absolutely, but it's still only an eight-point game and anything can go either way. I think, for me, Cardiff just needs to take a slight breath when they're making the decision. It's not necessarily either end of the floor. When they're back together as a unit, they're fantastic. When they're back together in an offensive, they're fantastic. It's in the middle of the floor. And this is exactly what we mean here. If we look back at the attacking play here at that time, you saw that she kind of set us up to her time in Russia. That's how it paid off them. Using those tactics in the offensive area. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just they've got to change some of their tactics in the middle of the floor now, getting the ball from either end. Um, just be really clinical with those passes. I mean, I feel I think we were a little bit harsh on Cardiff saying they needed to up their defensive game. So I feel they've done that now. But as you say, it's, it's that transitional area where it seems to be going wrong. Yeah, and also Nottingham are doing a fantastic job in disrupting that transition. Um, potentially a little bit more than they did in the first half. They're taking Cardiff out of their traditional set of offence um, and it'll be interesting to see what adjustments both teams now make going into the fourth. Yeah, it's all to play for here. Who is going to be the first name on the Bucks' big Wednesday final trophy? Is it going to University of Nottingham or is it heading a long way down the M40, down the M5 as well, all the way to Cardiff, across the M... I, I'm losing count of the motorway. There's a, a, lo a lot of a lot of junctions to go. Is it heading to the land of the dragon? What, what about? need to finish it off? Come on. <laughs> the land of the dragon. <laughs> Is it going back to Wales? Here we go then. Be Cardiff to start us off then here in the fourth. Ten minutes on the clock at the first ever British wheelchair basketball final at Bucks. Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance, and a big thanks to all our partners and sponsors as well. EY, ICG, Ashway, and the host, University of Nottingham. We're underway. Cardiff straight out the gate with the two. Nice from Jade Atkin. Ricochet down the basket there. A big thanks to you as well, joining us on the live stream. More basketball to come out throughout the day as well. Just use that hashtag. But big Wednesday, Dan May on the outside in the danger area though, finds a great pass to Holland who punishes for another two taking and his points total up to 18. Yeah, and that relationship game. between Dan May and Luke Holland has been prevalent through the whole of the game, probably from the second quarter more than the first. I definitely think that's something Cardiff need to watch out for. I think it's um, a relationship that's great, actually, Siobhan. As you say, it wasn't there in the first, but it kind of started in the second and it's just slowly got more and more. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for me, if I was on the Cardiff side, force the ball and make someone else score the score the baskets. And if they make them, fair play to them. But let's get Luke off the scoring. And I feel that's kind of what Nottingham has done to Cardiff. You know, we saw earlier on Ganley shooting well. We saw earlier on Atkin shooting well. And Nottingham are kind of asking questions of Cardiff now and asking, what other options have you got? As we see Martin Lane back on the floor once again. He's got four personal fouls. He's got to be careful in this fourth quarter the key player for them so far as, well as, as has Johnson Rolf as well loses the ball that time though and it's going to be yeah, and he won't be happy that from a personal perspective then I hope he uses that uh, disappointment there into his next offensive play so an eight point game here but it really doesn't feel like an eight point game it feels incredibly close that it could turn and tip in any direction at any moment Cardiff Met now. Nice. Finds the option of Johnson Rolf. That's a very close eight second call. It was 16 seconds in my eye when they were over the line. Very close indeed. I... Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say on the last one. <laughs> Nottingham <laughs> from the side. 
straight to Wilson. Now Nottingham, we've said all game long, it's moments like these that could be key, but in the fourth especially can be key. You have to take advantage. Nottingham did quite nicely that time round. Johnson Rolf finds that pass. Martin Laney wasn't quite expecting the ball there. Manages to get it anyway. Holds up traffic. Under pressure. Needs to find that pass. Gets it. Oh, great D there. Wilson having a great defensive game. Earlier on, took himself some time to grow into it. But since that first quarter, really has got going on the defensive play. And that basket. Absolutely love that enthusiasm there for referee to make yeah. that call. Um, <laughs> that's phenomenal. But no, just going back to what you were saying about Wilson, I think he is a player that I've not seen um, play. He's probably new to this book season this, this year. And I think it's just the first quarter, getting used to this crowd, getting used to the music, getting used to the, what the referees yeah. are going to call. And now he's thriving and absolutely loving it. And you, I mean, you look back at the game and you look at that first quarter, the players that were shooting and performing well are all players who have been at this kind of level before, who have been in these finals, who have been at club competition, you know, School national games, competition. Yeah. yeah, you know, you saw that in the first quarter. But now these players who are here for a reason, who may not necessarily have the same background, are really starting to grow into it. As we're here in the fourth, just under eight minutes on the clock. 38 Cardiff, 46. The University of Nottingham have really grown back into this game. Had that 14-point turnaround in the second to make things pretty level and then just ran away in the final minute or so of the third to put themselves in this position. Wilson. May. With that Welsh background. And what a pass. Come on. The, the, the it's defense. like their sidekick and just know where each yeah. other are going to be. I mean, there was, was there any point of the Cardiff defence there? Because the ball just kind of just oh, that was destined for him in a way. I said earlier they were to running on the same side there. They were running on separate sides. That was incredible. A great pass. Let's get a replay of that once again. So Danny May having the ball. Look, he looked at it. He looked for him and found him there. So he almost knew where he was going to put the ball before anybody's were in his way anyway. That is expert play from Danny May on the assist there as we are in the timeout and uh, Cardiff 10 point game they need to find some answers and they need to find them quickly yeah and you might not be able to see on the stream right now but the uh, Cardiff assistant coach Rose Williams is having quite a stern uh, word with the referee with the previous decision with Jade Atkins foul a crucial player that they could do with not getting into foul trouble But the thing is, though, when you're in a final like this, you are always going to get those calls that go your way, but also go against you. So you've got to kind of be prepared for that. Yeah, absolutely. And for, don't take away from referees, but for some of them, they not be used to refereeing in such a big caliber environment either. So their human mistakes are going to be made. And you just look at the scoreboard here. Cardiff, 29 rebounds, Nottingham, 35, with 22 points coming from Holland. And for me, that says it all what Nottingham have done in this game. They frustrated Cardiff. They got in the way of Cardiff. And they really just, they've almost just kind of nibbled away at Cardiff in a way. Just kind of been that little bit of a nuisance all the way through and just kind of powering through now. Ganley still on 15 points. Wilson straight through. And here's that man again. 24 points for Holland now. Yeah, and I definitely think Cardiff, whether it's from a coaching point of view or from the experienced players on the floor, need to recognise what Holland's doing. If it takes two players to defend him, do it. But it's not only that, it's Wilson as well, who has, as we said, grew in this, has grown in this game. At first, you were kind of, maybe wouldn't have put two players on him. But now, I would, 13 assists from him. So Wilson bring up the ball once again to the outside. Where are the players on him? Where are the players? Another two. 24 points for Holland in this game. He had all the space in the world to shoot for the long range too, and he did it, and he got the basket. Cardiff are looking like they're starting to run out of options, and they just need to find them.
kind of looked poised and ready in that first half. They looked under control and the game's kind of pulled away from them slightly in some ways. It's Cardiff with the rebound there. Cardiff now with a fresh player on court for Watkins. What a phenomenal finish there by uh, Neve Watson. Wilson bringing up court once again. He had space. Referee pulled that back. Well, I think for me now it's just Cardiff staying composed and trying to narrow this gap going into the final stages. That's what I was saying, you know, Cardiff in that first quarter looked professional, looked under control, and the game's kind of just fallen out of their grasp slightly. Yeah, absolutely, and not to be harsh, but I think it's just the little things that they haven't been doing as opposed to what they were doing in the first half. Things like getting those rebounds and giving Nottingham all the chances straight into Luke's hands again and another finish. As you, did, as you were commenting on it, you made, that was a perfect play to show with what you were talking about there, to be honest. It's just those little bits of mistakes are happening but also losing don't lose that confidence still battle in the key areas like that i mean cardiff's game it's been safe to say that you know during this game the defensive display maybe hasn't been the best at times however their offensive play has been fantastic at times it's been it's been inch perfect but they just kind of lost that offensive side Cardiff just need to find a little bit of a run of their own like Nottingham have had twice now during this game at the end of the third at the end of the second all Cardiff need is a little run like that and they're right back in this once again Cardiff net 40 Nottingham University 56 now in the first ever wheelchair basketball final at Bucks Big Wednesday powered by New Balance of course, Bucks Bid Wednesday, powered by New Balance, is brought to you with the support of Bucks partners EY. EY are one of the UK's best employers working with Bucks to employ talented Bucks students onto their graduate, intern, and insight week roles, offering something for students of all years. Bucks athletes can get their, have their applications fast tracked. So if you're looking for fulfilling a role at a brilliant organization, get your application in and tip Bucks as a partner and fast track eligibility to get the ball rolling. And here we go then, just over five minutes. This iconic, this historic, this pinnacle of university wheelchair basketball, the first ever here at Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. We're here on the live stream, get involved with the conversation too. Bucks Big Wednesday, get it on that hashtag. And I would to hear if the advantage of Nottingham playing in their home court with the home crowd is really helping them get through this final quarter. You know what, I think, to be honest, Cheryl, I mean, I know you've been now on the court, but for me it's no coincidence that Nottingham have clawed this back as the crowd has got bigger and louder. <laughs> Cardiff now. This player's had a great game. Ganley finds Lane. Got to find that pass. Nottingham with some great D there. Out of time on the shot clock. Went the shot, couldn't get it. Holland now with the rebound. 30 points for him in this game. Unstoppable. And it was a great pass to Wilson. Picked up his rebound. Couldn't quite get the shot off but draws a foul and will go to the line for two. Learning from his mistakes in that first quarter where I think he had like four rebounds and offensive rebounds in a row. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's just a learning and growing within this game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you say, growing in confidence as well, you know. it's uh, uh, You know, Wilson, this may be his first time here at a Bucks final like this, at this level, at this calibre. And that looks like a fifth personal foul for Lane who goes off. Lane's had a good game this, has a, had a good game so far though, Siobhan, right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he can be disheartened from uh, not playing with the rest of the game. Yeah. 
So from the inline then, I thought it was going to the line for two, but not, but still couldn't quite take advantage of that basket there. And this lady needs to find what worked for us so well in that first Rebecca Gamley. I don't necessarily think it's what needs to find it in individually, but Nottingham are doing a great job at taking her out of the game. Yeah. And unfortunately, Cardiff have struggled to take the likes of Dan May and Luke Holland out of their positions. I think it, and it goes back to almost to the, the confidence of Nottingham. That they look almost, looking back at it now, they almost look nervous in that first, but they've just switched it on since then. Another basket for Luke Holland. What a game for him. Over 30 points now in this game. Incredible. Liz Ponting couldn't quite get on the end of that. Wilson now in to bring it up court. Three on two. Got that time to set it up. Didn't snatch at his chance. Picks the rebound up. Doesn't land it. Wilson. Four two. Tell you what, I think he just wants to get his rebounds. That <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's like he's got a bet with someone about who can get the most rebounds. <laughs> Fifteen rebounds for Wilson. <laughs> Cardiff now 20 point game who knows though as I said earlier on all they need is a little run Nottingham had those two runs unopposed at two crucial moments in the games and for me that's where the pendulum swang in their favour but is there one more twist is there one more tail is there one more loop-de-loop -loop in this story between these two iconic wheelchair basketball sides two on one situation again for Nottingham and that has happened too many times in this game absolutely and I think it's as much as Cardiff now are, are 20 points behind it's still been a phenomenal performance from them in this first box uh, final but I definitely think Nottingham are I don't want to jinx it but gaining this win due to how clinical they are now being yeah. in the fourth quarter as opposed to their counterparts of Cardiff and they're just picking those key moments at the right time how many times has we, have we seen two on one three on two Four on three. Every time Nottingham team to go forward, they have an extra extra player there. And that's an unfortunate shot Again. there for not to drop. Three on one. Coach Gundrip, when he looks back at this game, I think it will be Cardiff's, Cardiff's defence that hasn't been up to scratch in this one. However, their offensive play at times, woo, incredible. Uh, I wonder if we go back to a comment earlier about Nottingham not something, you know, Ganley and Atkin have had to play a 40 minute game Yeah. with full pressure from the Nottingham side fatigue is now setting in and I wonder if some rotations perhaps earlier on in the game could have saved them for the fourth quarter and if I remember rightly I'm not sure Luke Holland even started for Nottingham as well so almost like a secret weapon for them and Wilson again look at this he's their secret weapon I'm <laughs> <laughs> and again open basket open basket for Holland looking to take advantage and again there we go, there we go. I think Holland, it's, as you say, that fatigue that the swang in his favour because he, he didn't really go full pelt in that first quarter. In a way, you could argue that maybe that's what the coach Austin said is that, you know, hold it back that first quarter, let them come at us, let's see what they got, let's see what options they have and then we'll play our game. Because yeah, and I'm not sure how many times they've actually met within the league, the league rounds coming up to this final, so they might not even know what Cardiff could have could have brought and like you said they knew that they had the ability to finish this game off yeah it started in three different pools for these sides and uh, I believe Nottingham were in the Midlands tier whereas Cardiff were in the Southern tier so like you said they were just getting used to each other in the first half and Nottingham knew from their previous performances against other university teams that they have on it within them to finish the fourth quarter. And this is what I mean, Cardiff have just lost some of that professionalism there. They've ran out of time on the shot clock. That's the kind of thing that you weren't seeing in that first quarter as we see a substitution from Cardiff now with Trevin Hughes making their way on court, replacing Ponting once again. Ponting for me, a good rotation play from her throughout this game. Yeah, and absolutely, and actually, like you said there with Cardiff, not been able to finish the game off they will be disappointed um, to have lost this game however I think it's such a massive learning curve for these especially the likes of Atkin and Ganley who are going to be in this game for a long time to learn how to clinically finish a game yeah the perseverance of Nottingham oh. really has been key for them in this game and now we're just kind of riding high on that confidence which in fairness they have built 
throughout this game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for if anyone's tuning into the stream and haven't watched it from the start, I promise you that this game has been neck and neck right up until the fourth quarter. Absolutely. I think, to be honest, I think that scoreline is unfair on Cardiff because, it, as you say, first three quarters it was neck and neck, and then the fourth, God, Cardiff just seemed to have just faded it away. I think Cardiff just went away from their game plan a little bit, maybe slightly panicked. Might be yeah. too strong a word, but just panicked about the likes of Holland and May and let them have the shots that they wanted, rather than Cardiff dictating for Nottingham about what shots that they wanted to give up. I think Cardiff were running, probably running the play in that first quarter. Then the second quarter were asked to find some options. They did so, but they just ran out of those options as Nottingham seemed to have an answer every time. And then combine that with Nottingham's first run at the end of the second, that first run at the end of the, of the third quarter. I mean, it was under the space, under a minute that they scored all those baskets. And the game plan that you got, you kind of are mentally starting to build ahead of that next quarter goes out the window. As we come into the final play of the game here at the uh, Big Book Wednesday final. Yeah, it's been amazing, iconic, historic, history being made at the home of Bucks Big Wednesday, the U Nottingham University. And as we head towards those final moments, what a game it's been between these two sides, but it looks like the title of the first ever wheelchair basketball is staying right here in Nottingham at Bucks Big Wednesday. It finishes Cardiff Mets University 40 the University of Nottingham 66. Siobhan, what a game to be Absolutely phenomenal. And I think for I've been on that team that have lost and won. And I think right now Cardiff are going to be absolutely beating themselves up at how they performed in that fourth quarter. But they've got to take a lot of positive from that performance. Um, a phenomenal game for definitely the first three quarters. Um, and it's been fantastic to be able to watch um, some of these players put on a fantastic performance here today at the University of Nottingham. And it's one of those games that if you rerun this and you replay it back, very easily could have been a different result. Absolutely. I, I was really expecting, as we both said earlier on in the game, to go down to the wire. Um, but I think it was just not enough to switch the defence that took Kyle out of their system. Well, I mean, we look at the stats here, and Ganley was had that great first in second quarter with 15 points, but Luke Holland, 36 points. Incredible stuff, a massive congratulations to the University of Nottingham. We'll have a trophy presentation with you in a few moments' time. Cardiff, commiserations, but great commitment to get here to the first ever wheelchair basketball final. And what a great advert for the game, Siobhan. Yeah, absolutely, and I hope that this, this is something that can continue in different universities feature in this final, um, because the growth of uh, wheelchair basketball in this country right now is really exciting to have this many players play in our sport. Gives me two as, a, as an athlete to be a part of it. And I mean, just look at the quality that we saw on the court. I mean, we'll look back at some of these stats here. Lane, Johnson, Rolf of Cardiff, four assists each. Rolf, nine rebounds. Atkins, nine rebounds. Ganley, 15 points. Johnson, Rolf, 11 points. To have that kind of stable level of all those athletes from the team that are silver medalists here is incredible. But we look at the story of Nottingham here. 16 rebounds from Wilson. I know at first we were saying, look, he's got to take advantage of these offensive rebounds, but he grew in the game and those defensive rebounds came and he worked the joy. Danny May, as usual, seven assists, setting up that play, using that commitment to drive through that middle. And that's where, as we were saying during that third quarter, that Nottingham were kind of gaining the possession was in that transitional zone and Danny May was a key part of that but the key of the story here and I would like to see how many of these points came from that final quarter Luke Holland 36 points an absolute performance from a young athlete Oof. I can't wait to see his growth both within books both within the National League the GB pathway if he can put 36 points against a tough opposition they won't some of them Towards the end of the fourth quarter, yes, there were some easy points, but he hit some contested shots throughout that game as well. It just seemed to me that Cardiff were in fifth gear for the first half of the game and then just kind of dropped off slightly. We look back at the points here, I would mention field goals again as I did at half time. Cardiff, 43 attempts, 18 of those converted. Nottingham, 
85 attempts. If you create more chances, you're going to get more baskets. It's as simple as that. Incredible game, though, between these two. And a big thank you to all of our partners and sponsors as well, including New Balance, EY, ICG, Asher Way, and our host, the University of Nottingham. We will hear from our winning coach in a few moments' time as we look towards that trophy presentation and our athletes collecting their silver medals now from Cardiff. And they did really well, Cardiff. Here. Honestly, I think that scoreline is quite unfair. And it, yes, OK, Luke Holland, I'm not downing the point that he got 36 points, but how many of those points came in the final minute or so of the game? Yeah, now, that's absolutely. the question you've got to ask. Absolutely. I, like you said, if they watch the first three quarters back, they will be really, really impressed with their performance here today. And to gain the civil medal is such a prestigious, high-level league. It's a phenomenal achievement. It will feel a bit sad now. I've been on the receiving end of a silver medal and you feel like quite negative about it. Sometimes they always say winning bronze and gold are better. Well, I was going to say, in those moments where your head is down, do you find yourself learning more in those situations? I think for me personally, it's always after the event. I think right now it's okay for me to be down and, and be sad and be disappointed. Um, but I think it will be in a couple of weeks' time when they go back to training and they go back to their clubs, they, they deep into the game. Um, when they realise that it's a phenomenal yeah. performance. Absolutely. And look, you know, not to get fantastic, but you know, they weren't without their errors as well. The amount of times they left the Cardiff Met player just, just to have a shot. You know, so there's learning to do on both these sides, but that's what this is all about. At this level, the pinnacle of university sport, these are the athletes of the future. They can learn if they're a silver medalist, if they're a gold medalist, they can learn and move forward to that next level. What do they decide to do? Yeah, absolutely, and for me, the bigger picture is about just showcasing wheelchair basketball as a sport on such a prestigious stage. Uh, uh, yeah, I just hope it's something that features in books for a very, very long time and helps this grow the sport in the whole nation. And it is growing constantly. We mentioned earlier the Premier League, we mentioned the new format, the three on three of the Commonwealth Games, the work that you're doing with the national team as well, Siobhan. I mean, it, the sky's the limit for wheelchair basketball. That's proven here by the first ever. And we, but I have to say, we've waited far too long for this. The first ever wheelchair basketball final at Bucks Big Wednesday. It should have happened way before this. Yeah, we were very fortunate that we had a university championships before this, but nothing of this level, nothing of this calibre. And like I said, when I was doing my degree, if I had the opportunity to feature in this books tournament, it might influence whether I do my maths or not. So all of our officials now to collect their medals for officiating this final as well. Amazing work by all of those. Yeah, and I definitely think this is a wonderful addition. I haven't seen this very often with the officials <laughs> receiving a medal, but they're the people that allow this game to happen. Absolutely. And without them, as much as when we win the game, we might disagree with some of the decisions. There might be some shot clock <laughs> decisions that we don't agree with. In reality, without them, we wouldn't be able to play. Let's just hope they don't re-watch this live stream. <laughs> I love you all. You're all my favourite people. <laughs> so, MVP of the game. And for me, the right call there, MVP of this game, number 20, Luke Holland, 36 points and 16 rebounds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was given the, the decision to make that choice of who I had as my MVP, and I think, you know, as much as the likes of Scanley and Atkin had a fantastic game for Cardiff, performance from Luke Holland today was something that only I could do about getting 36 points in one, in one game. And in, way, and in a way, he, was, he wasn't even really there in the first quarter, so he did that in three quarters, really. Incredible. And Danny May, captain of the University of Nottingham, he's used to these finals, and I'm sure he'll be used to lots, lots more in the future as well. Raises the trophy high for his team at the first ever British wheelchair basketball Bucks Big Wednesday powered by New Balance Final. Siobhan, those final thoughts. Yeah, I just think it's been an absolutely fantastic game. 
Um, the fourth quarter definitely, like, like you said, the score does not reflect the performance on both sides today. Um, Cardiff put in a fantastic performance and I just hope that both sides enjoy this experience to be part of such a phenomenal um, championship in front of a crowd, in front of music and DJs and commentators and spectators um, and hopefully this helps them improve um, for future books finals. Absolutely, it's amazing to see. A massive thank you. A massive thank you to all of these sponsors helping us at Bucks Big Wednesday as well. New Balance, EY, ICG, Ashaway and the University of Nottingham keeping the trophy right here for so many sports taking place today as well. 57 trophy bays and championship finals including here wheelchair basketball, football, hockey, netball, rugby league, you name it, it's probably happening right here at the University of Nottingham. Once again, commiserations for Cardiff Met putting together a brilliant final some expert plays from all the players and athletes here and the University of Nottingham your champions of the first ever British wheelchair basketball final for 2022 here at Bucks Big Wednesday powered by New Balance So Luke, our MVP, I mean, what a performance. 36 points, 16 rebounds, an amazing performance from you this afternoon. I don't know what to say to me, it wasn't expected to go like that at all. It, it 
makes the whole team think that I wouldn't be in this position without the rest of the four on court and the rest of the bench as well because they're constantly communicating and constantly telling you where to be. It, I, I wouldn't be able to do it on my own at all. And it's one of those things that Nottingham really grew into the game. I mean, that first quarter... It was Cardiff a slow was, start. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Cardiff was showing a really professional performance, but you guys had the run in the end of the second, had the run in the end of the third, and set yourself up for the fourth, and, yeah. wow, it was just the, the barn doors were open. Yeah, well, we didn't want that long break at half-time. We wanted to keep going. It, it, once you get going, you, ne you never want to stop, so it's not... It's, it's hard to, to keep the momentum going. I put that down to the team because I was quite tired at half-time. So it's not me at all. I, well, that was it. You mentioned momentum there. For you, it was. We saw a lot of those unopposed runs of baskets. That you just got those combinations together throughout, and that, that was what really kind of won you guys the game. Yeah, it comes from the, the defence. It was the whole team defending high up and pushing it on. They were they were they were out of position all the time when we got the ball, so it made the shots really easy. Well, Luke, you are the first ever MVP of the first ever. British wheelchair basketball final here at Bucks Big Wednesday. How do you feel? Uh, I came here hoping for the goal. I did not. I did not want this. Ideally, but it's a whole team thing. I, it's just the way it went. I'm very happy. I've never scored that much before. <laughs> well, Luke, congratulations. We'll let you go and celebrate with your team. Thank you. And congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you.